I want to give a warm, warm welcome to all of our attendees. Um, you know, we have over a, a thousand people registered from 50 different countries um, who will either be joining us live right now during the session or will be coming back around after the fact um, and viewing the recordings once those are prepared later on. Um, so I'm, I'm noticing you, Bryce. I know it's a it's a little hairy there in terms of you know lighting and everything else going on. Um, I I don't think it's necessary. I'm going to be you know taking my video off in just a minute. So I think feel free to you could blur your background. That's always something that works well as uh, as an option. Um, I'm not sure why it's doing that kind of weird. You look like you know something out of one of these Halloween movies I've been watching on Netflix recently, but I'm not going to go there. So, uh, all right, to to just say a few words before giving this over to to Price to kind of uh, introduce our guests and and take the lead on this discussion. Um, I just want to say again, warm welcome to everyone. Uh, Ken Widmeyer and Sam, who are advisory board members for our Masters of Tourism Management program here at Colorado State University. And um, Price will be uh, reading your bios here in just a minute so that everybody is more familiar with, with your backgrounds. Um, and I also just want to briefly introduce Price, who uh, I know Sam and Ken, you've had a, a, an opportunity to meet uh, him in person briefly, in Iraq briefly, but uh, I can't say enough good things about Price. I'm very glad that he's here to join us and to kind of represent, let's say, uh, our, our student attendees who represent over half of the 1,000 plus registered for this conference. Um, so a lot of students involved here and kind of uh, uh, very curious to learn from Ken, your experience and Sam's uh, in both the, the private and public sectors and the positions that you've been involved in. I'm just gonna cut out now. I just wanna say though, Price, um, it's really great to have you here. Uh, and I know uh, you'll be able to, to lead us in a great conversation. So warm welcome again and uh, take it away, friends. Hey, thank you so much, David. Thank you, Sam and Ken, for being here too. Uh, like David said, my name is Price Willock. I graduated from CSU's Master's of Tourism Management last May. Love it. I got natural, I did my bachelor's in natural resource recreational tourism as well with a business administration minor. And I also had a business to business sales certificate. I am from Atlanta, Georgia. So mountains are a big change for me. I wanted to get away from family uh, and I love snowboarding. So that's a little bit about me. Now I'll tell you all about our great panelists here. First, we have Ken Widmeyer, who following after 40 years in the hospitality industry, serving top tier hotels, resorts, and property management companies. Ken is currently the principal of Front Range Hospitality Consulting. Under Ken's leadership over the past decade as chief operating officer at Sage Hospitality, the company grew revenue from 600 million to 1 billion and strategically transformed in the process. Prior to Sage Hospitality, Ken was the East Region, uh, East Region Senior Vice President of Operations for Destination Hotels and Resorts, one of the country's largest hospitality and property management firms. Ken finds personal fulfillment in giving back to the hospitality industry and our future generation of leaders by serving as a board member of the Masters of Tourism program at Colorado State University, mentoring approximately six students each year and guest lecturing at a number of institutions of higher learning, including CSU, Metro State University in Denver, College of Charleston, and Ryerson University. Beyond career pursuits, he enjoys spending time with his wife, daughter, and two sons and appreciating the Colorado lifestyle, particularly hiking in the Rockies. Our other phenomenal panelist is Sam Albert. Samantha serves as Deputy Director for the Colorado Outdoor Recreation Industry Office, or OREC. Uh, her, her work as Deputy Director supports the office's mission of inspiring industries and communities to thrive in Colorado's great outdoors. This is accomplished by supporting programming that focuses on four areas, economic development, conservation and stewardship, education work, and workforce training, public health and wellness. Prior to her uh, work with OREC, she worked for El Pomar Foundation, where she helped direct regional partnerships program and supported regional grant making in Northwest Colorado. Samantha received the BS in political science with, uh, from Colorado College. She spends her free time participating in a variety of outdoor activities, with some of her favorite, including uh, souping and hiking. So now that I've introduced you briefly, would you mind telling us a bit how you ended up in your particular career? In other words, what factors were key in your decision to go all the way that you did as one of your works in the public sphere and the other in the private? What's the most important action steps those listening should consider to begin a successful career in each of your uh, sectors, respectively? You want to go, Sam? Yeah, I'm happy to kick it off. Thanks so much, Price. And um, just want to say thanks so much to everyone for being here. We're really grateful. 
um, and just grateful for CSU for putting this on. Um, so yeah, that is my, my brief background. Um, I'm originally from Colorado, went to college in Colorado, um, and have sort of serendipitously ended up in state government. And I feel like Ken will probably say something similarly, but you feel like you might have one track and then you kind of end up on another track and it all works out, you know, for the best, um, which is kind of how I feel uh, where I ended up and that was my process. So uh, as Price said, I worked for um, a foundation in Colorado Springs prior to working in state government. I've been with the state for almost six years now. And uh, truthfully, I, I think it was that kind of nonprofit foundation experience that made me realize that working in the public sector was something that I was very passionate about. And, you know, as, as many, many folks, I've got a lot of peers, you know, that are in their, you know, early 30s, maybe even young, late 20s as well, who could say that at that age of, you know, 21, 22 years old, you, you may not have any idea what you want to do. And so I was fortunate enough to uh, get a great fellowship with that foundation and start working on some regional grant making. Um, it, of course, helped that uh, being from Colorado, I had a love of, of the great outdoors. And so it, it was very natural to end up in this outdoor recreation and tourism sector. And it just happened that it was a public sector position with the state of Colorado. Uh, and just very quick background on that, the office it was created in 2015, so it's a pretty young office. Um, and it, it was really just getting a connection through that foundation world that led me to this position. And I ended up working with my, my now previous boss, um, who was just getting the team up and running. So we've definitely been... I guess this metaphor is great, building the bicycle as we've been riding it with this office. You know, it's it's been kind of a, a great learning experience. Um, but truthfully, I think the most important thing you should consider is like, what gives you passion? What makes you excited each day? And for me, my love of outdoor recreation and tourism in particular makes my job so easy every day. And I know that might be a bit cliche price, but um, it, it truthfully is. I think if you can find that and check that box, then you'll have a successful career in whatever you do. Yeah, definitely. I agree. Ken, what about you? Yeah, I want to uh, echo uh, Sam's initial comments and in thanking everybody who's uh, participating in the Tourism Naturally Conference. I think it's a, a great conference and uh, thank you for being a part of it. Uh, for me, what got me interested in hospitality was that I was looking for something, a career that was exciting, um, that provided growth opportunities, a variety of options, um, not only in terms of uh, different things you could uh, consider in your career, but also locations. I also uh, like uh, having the ability to work with different people, different types, different personalities. And so when you look at the hospitality industry, it kind of checks the boxes of uh, all that. You know, um, when you look at it uh, from, a, from an industry standpoint, you can be in hospitality and have a focus on law, be in hospitality and focus on food and beverage be in hospitality and focus on finance. There's just the, the breadth of opportunity within the industry is just tremendous. And uh, for me, that was a real turn on and uh, really what got me interested in it because you could also take, you know, do that industry basically anywhere. You wanna be in a resort in the mountains, you can do it. You can be in New York City. You could be an island in the Pacific. You know, so, you know, the, the, the wide range of opportunities is almost endless. Uh, in terms of the other question, Price, that you asked uh, regarding uh, what people should do in, you know, about uh, a career, is I would say the one word I would use is explore. And what I mean by explore is you, everybody doesn't always know exactly what they want to do. So just explore your different options and, and look at it and say, okay, well, you know what, I think I'd like to do finance and, you know, ask people, ask questions, volunteer. Um, and once you get into a job, volunteer in terms of taking on additional scope of responsibilities or, or doing projects. 
um, look for opportunities to contribute because you basically learn through all of that. And by learning, it's going to either validate you're on the correct path that you want to pursue, or you may learn during the course of that, that you want to make a course correction and go slightly different to something that really uh, uh, turns you on. Awesome. Thank you all so much. With that in mind, when you're exploring for both of y'all sectors respectively, is there a specific organization or a place that you want to go to to look for, not necessarily job listings, but places to kind of learn more about or go further in depth to any kind of career field necessarily? I think um, it goes back to uh, the word that I used in terms of exploring. If you if you just kind of narrow in on hospitality and hotels, right? You might be somebody might be thinking, okay, well, yeah, that might be something fun to explore. And where to begin is maybe to go to a city center hotel and you know tour that and maybe set up an appointment with human resources or somebody where you have lunch. Um, and then you may want to take a look at a resort and you go up um, into the mountains and do the same thing. Or you may want to go to a suburban property. You can do it by luxury, by type of tier and independent. So I think um, exploring is the, uh, the best way to, uh, to do that because in your exploration, of your different options, that's going to narrow it and give you, I think, a, a firmer focus on what you would like to pursue. Yeah, and my recommendation, I mean, gosh, there's so many job boards out there, but one that I've been particularly fond of recently is the Basecamp Outdoor newsletter. And there's also a really strong uh, social media presence as well. And certainly this is more geared towards outdoor industry folks, uh, and you know, there's there's absolutely kind of hospitality specific uh, positions, whether that's through summer camps or resorts or that type of thing. But it's been a really excellent community of outdoor enthusiasts. So check that one out if you haven't had a chance to yet. Sweet, thank y'all so much. Um, now about sustainability. What is one story y'all can share that highlights your own experience in your own tourism work uh, that helping to promote sustainability as in you know environmental, social, economic. Um, and then also, how might you encourage students listening uh, from around the world right now with one action step they could do to be more sustainable in relation to your tourism sector or in general? Yeah, I think uh, uh, there's a lot that's been done, and I think there's a lot of positive momentum with people, you know, using, looking for reusables, um, doing bulk versus individual packing our packaging, um, avoiding plastic bottles and all that. I think if you know, create, if you go down uh, the avenue of creativity, uh, even though COVID has sort of um, pushed us in the direction of remote working, which I think in its own way is a sustainable, you know, works on sustainability, right? You're, you're leaving less of a carbon footprint in the world, et cetera, et cetera. I think that that doesn't cover all the different positions uh, when you look at hospitality, for example. So you still need a waiter or a server to be at the property, you know, or, or at their restaurant to serve. So how can you implement a sustainability concept in that? And one way to uh, maybe look at it is instead of having servers come in five days a week, eight hours a day, they're coming in four days a week, 10 hours a day, all right? And so then you're reducing the carbon footprint because you don't have that one commute 20% of the week and you know, try to make it work that way. So I think that the, the, the answer is to be creative and also to go back to the word that I, I love to use is explore. Go out and see what other uh, companies and um, assets are doing in terms of sustainability. Have lunch with um, your peers and bring it up as a topic because there's so many things that you learn just by interacting and um, with other people that you can bring those ideas back to your, your workplace and, uh, and reduce the carbon footprint and do something great for the environment. Yeah, there's 
the pandemic has definitely shown us a lot of 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 interesting opportunities. Um, the the really I think key takeaway for me here is is opportunities for public and private partnerships. And you know, there's some really fascinating data coming out of the pandemic just about outdoor participation. Um, I think it was it's roughly seven million more people participated in outdoor recreation in 2020 compared to 2019. It's like an insane figure. Um, so that was almost, I think, over 50 percent of the U.S. population that was participating in some form of outdoor recreation. And a lot of communities, I mean, particularly in Colorado, you know, experienced a lot of uh of detrimental impacts because of that, right? You know, and like Ken said, you know, maybe there are impacts to hospitality. And so folks might be going into communities to recreate and then expect to have, you know, people available for, you know, restaurant service or hotel service. And, and a lot of those things were shut down. So um, I think the, the interesting example I'll share is uh, one that was happening in Glenwood Springs and that's with the Hanging Lake, um, area. And, and so if, if any of you have been up to Hanging Lake, it's a very, very beautiful, beautiful place. But prior to this new partnership that they, they ended up implementing, it, there were days where you could not get up there. The parking lot was full. People were going up. It was pretty dangerous transportation situation. And so, you know, there were occasionally times where they had to close that down and people could not physically get up to Hanging Lake. So they, they implemented a, a public-private partnership with a local rafting company to get transportation from downtown Glenwood Springs um, so that folks could just meet in Glenwood, hop on this rafting bus, and get up to Hanging Lake without having to worry about their own vehicles. And so, you know, of course, the, the positive consequences to that are that people are not driving their own cars. You know, potentially there's less... Um, you know, issues, safety issues, potentially less litter in the parking lots, that type of thing. So we've seen communities look at opportunities for that, especially with their local rec businesses to see if, if there are kind of creative ways to solve um, recreation problems. And so I, I always point to that one as an interesting one. Uh, and then Price, just to answer your kind of second question there, just from a personal perspective, I always operate under the, you know, leave it better than you found it mantra, right? So not only are you practicing, you know, potentially leave no trace principles, but, you know, you're picking up trash, you know, you're, you're, you're seeing something, you know, I, I hate, we talk about this a lot in tourism and recreation, but folks that are, are bringing their dogs on the trail and just leaving their poop bags on the trail. It's like, be that person when you're going back to your car and just pick that up as gross as that sounds, but you know, you're, you really can have an impact. And then it also demonstrates a really great um, action for others to hopefully emulate as well. So that's my one piece of advice. That's awesome. I love it. Um, so with both of y'all's sectors in mind, what are some of the most significant trends that you've observed, both negative and positive? Yeah, I think, um, you know, piggybacking on Sam's comment about the number of um, tourists that really experienced the natural wonders of the country, as opposed to you know, doing the typical um, go to New York City, go to Las Vegas, you know, they're going to Yellowstone um, and other national parks. Um, I thought that that was a, uh, a really positive uh, trend. Um, I think that a negative trend, and actually it's one that I think is going to continue. Um, at, and maybe the, there's going to be a step back because Vegas is open, New York City is open. But I think that the um, that people who have experienced the natural outdoors are not going to say uh, that's a one and done. It's going to be, I think, something that's going to continue into the future. Um, and I think in the future, there's going to be more of a combination of kind of uh, where people may go on a vacation right now and really just kind of focus either on, you know, a destination such as Las Vegas, that it's going to turn into a destination and also a part that's dedicated to the natural, you know, natural parks and experiencing the outdoors. So I think that's going to be kind of the, um, the wave of the future. I also think on the negative side, you know, and a lot of this had to do with COVID is uh, there's less 
of a connection between uh, people who are working in restaurants and hotels and their customers. Um, so that disconnect, I think, needs to be addressed because so much of the experience that um, tourists and customers uh, remember going forward is that personal interaction that they had with other people in other locations. You know, that's part of the learning experience. And so I think we need to kind of figure out a way where we're providing a safe um, experience for people who are traveling, but at the same time, make sure that we're balancing it, that we're be able to provide an authentic experience for the different locations where they're able to interact with other people. Yeah, absolutely. And Ken highlighted, yeah, I mean, many of the positives are on the outdoor side, folks just getting outside. I mean, there's so many mental and physical health benefits to that. Um, certainly there's a lot more we have to do on that front when it comes to equity and access. And, and I know that that's a topic of conversation with, with so many of the communities that we work with um, at my state office. Um, you know, some of the negatives, we've kind of highlighted this a bit, but you know, housing is, is a huge issue, certainly across the US, but especially in our mountain communities in Colorado. And you know, just trying to figure out what we can do for you know, workforce housing, as well as you know, for, for folks that are visiting. I, I know we, we've spoken with lots of folks across many of our mountain communities that are, are, are trying to figure out how to work with you know, short-term rental opportunities and, and what that might look like you know, when it comes to workforce housing support and whether there are opportunities to support locals while also still supporting a strong and vibrant tourism economy. So I think there, there's some good opportunities there. So if you all have any ideas and you're interested in that intersection of hospitality and recreation, we could really benefit some, from some good problem solving minds on that. But, but I know in, in communities like Salida and, and Buena Vista, they're looking at you know, how can they, they provide you know, lower cost housing, I mean, some have even done, you know, for seasonal workers who, who are interested in this, you know, like outdoor housing opportunities like camping, which is, is not a long-term solution by any means, but, you know, temporarily as we figure this out, it really sometimes works hand in hand with the outdoor industry. So getting creative is pretty cool. Um, and the last thing I'll just note is there was a, an interesting um, thing passed in Chafee County, uh, Hip Camp was was kind of a sponsor on this one of allowing private land owners to put up parcels of their property for, for camping opportunities. So, so there's some cool things happening out there to support the recreation industry as more people come to mountain communities, especially. Um, so I would say it's mostly positive, but there, there's a lot of work we have to do, especially coming out of, of this pandemic. That's awesome. Um, with, with, with that in mind, y'all both kind of touched this already with, with, what y'all are talking about, what direction would you like to see the tourism industry head in a general holistic sense, as well as more of a personal sense? Um, if y'all wouldn't mind going in you know, more detail about where you personally would want it to go, that'd be awesome. Sure. Um, I would use the term authentic travel um, as, a, as a direction. And what I mean by that is to pick uh, for um, consumers, tourists to pick locations where they're going to go and really get an authentic feel for um, how the people live in that location, uh, what the food is, you know, um, how they act and what they like and what's important to them. Uh, and for the traveler, the tourist to gain an appreciation for the people and their culture. Um, I would also, um, hope when you put it in terms of you, how you would like the uh, industry to head, I would also add to that um, to an element of giving back uh, to the world. So for example, if you're going to go to, uh, to Europe or to South America, how can you um, have that authentic ex experience and couple it with giving back. And so uh, a great example is the World Central Kitchen, right? And so do you volunteer with the World Central Kitchen and spend a week, 
you know, helping uh, that organization um, with people who are in need. And then your other week or two weeks, you know, doing what I mentioned before in terms of that authentic travel where you're getting immersed in, in that um, culture. That's exciting. I want to do that, Ken. <laughs> Um, I mean, I, I will absolutely re reiterate everything that Ken just said. I think, you know, one of the things that many folks face is this kind of sense of gatekeeping when they go to communities. And, and I think, you know, we, we really should get away from that mindset, you know, both as a visitor and a tourist and as a local to a certain community that is welcoming visitors and tourists. It, and a lot of it, I mean, there's it's a two-way street, certainly, but you know, being opening and welcome to to those that, that are coming to your your place, your community, um, but also really instilling a sense of community value and appreciation. And then on the other side, that tourist side, like Ken said, like really immersing yourself in in that particular place that you're visiting. And I love the idea of giving back if you have the opportunity and time to do so. But at the very least, just getting a, a good understanding of, you know, sense of place and what makes the place that you're visiting so special. And so in Colorado, I mean, any of these places you could go to just understanding that there's, you know, there's so much more, you know, than maybe just that, that ski resort, you know, maybe checking out the museums and understanding that local history, you know, what makes the town unique. Um, and then the other thing is just being positive. I you know, we have so many hospitality workers that are working way too many hours for way too little pay. And it's just, just being kind to one another is something that I absolutely, um, I've sort of taken for granted. And when I've gone to communities, especially kind of right post pandemic, it's just, it's pretty impactful just, you know, how, how being kind can can really impact someone's day. So that is a personal thing, um, but something that I hope everyone can really implement as they're as they're touring whatever community they're touring. Yeah, I definitely agree. That's awesome. Um, y'all, we we hit all my big points. And something I really wanted to ask kind of towards the end was uh what's something you wish people like myself in panels like this would have asked y'all about? Uh, what's something rarely that y'all get to discuss that's something something you really want to discuss if there's anything um but you know if there's something y'all like to share or something that you really wish i asked you about uh please please share uh i think if there was a question uh it would probably be along the lines of what is the thing what is the accomplishment that you are most proud of um you know i think when though that question gets asked, it really, uh, the, you know, if somebody answers it authentically, I mean, it really gives you good insight into uh, what makes that person tick. What was the biggest accomplishment? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, um, most people uh, answer that question from a, a professional lens. And when I have answered that question in the past, um, I always uh, answer it this way, which is that, you know, I think my greatest accomplishment, I hope, is that I've been a good husband and a good um, father. Um, and so, you know, everything kind of centers around the family. And you know, whatever successes I've had in my career have been um, a, a result of me feeling comfortable on the home front and having the priorities in that order versus the other way around. That's awesome. That's awesome. Definitely. Sam, what about you? Oh, man. Oh, I, yeah, I mean, I think to Ken's point, just generally being a good person, I would hope the same thing for me as well. But I was thinking from kind of an outdoor rec lens, um, you know, I, I had the, the opportunity to go on a couple of Colorado Outward Bound trips, and those were incredibly eye-opening. <laughs> and 
I think just generally, you know, thinking about kind of what you can do to kind of push beyond your comfort zone. And, and for me, that that happens to be, you know, through outdoor recreation experiences a lot. And so talking through that lens, it's like thinking of times where, you know, you feel like you can't do something and it's that truly that mind over matter experience. Um, and just, yeah, you know, whether it's reaching that peak, you know, finishing that race, whatever that might be for you for that activity. I feel like those are definitely moments that I feel particularly accomplished. Um, and then of course, all of the great feelings afterwards with, you know, your mental well-being too. So, um, but yeah, I'd say some of those. Sam, do you have anything that you wish I asked? That, that was a really great question for Ken. I was trying to honestly think of a funny question, but I didn't prepare for this one. So <laughs> that would have been my, my key moment there. <laughs> That's awesome, y'all. Thank you so much for taking the time with speaking with me today. And uh, I've certainly enjoyed it. Hope everyone who's watching has enjoyed it. Um, but that was pretty much all the big picture points I wanted to talk about. And so I guess now I'll hand it back to David. Yeah, thank you, Price. Um, such a great conversation here. And, and I do get the sense that there's so much beneath the surface, really in, in all of your lives here, including yours, Price. Um, that we just don't have the time to get into. Um, great examples from each of you. Um, you know, Sam, I don't know you very well yet, but I do look forward to getting to know you um, in your role and, and working with us as an advisory board member for our master's in tourism management program. And of course, Ken, you know, our brief interactions and uh, extended phone calls over <laughs> with loud coffee shop noise blaring through. And, um, you know, it's been really great uh, just getting to know you as well and, and seeing your, your really, I would say, sincere um, interest in listening to others and uh, understanding those around you. It's something I've really learned from personally, even in our brief interactions and um, really appreciate that. So uh, one thing I did want to say was I was surprised to hear uh, you know, for our international listeners, uh, anybody watching this now or in the future, uh, maybe you noticed Price in his questions using the word y'all a lot. So there's the Atlanta, Georgia coming out. But what surprised me, I knew that about Price. What surprised me a little bit more was uh, when Sam, I don't know if it was once or a few times, you threw in a couple of y'alls as well. And I was like, all right, I guess it's Ken. Did you, did you, I don't know if you used one, but um, yeah, that was kind of interesting. So I, um, yeah, I think we'll just, we'll wrap this up a little bit early here. And um, uh, just uh, again, want to encourage everyone involved watching live or, or later on that, uh, um, you know, you can access the Whova app and uh, present additional questions if you have them. Um, I want to again thank um, our panelists here uh, for your involvement and support. I know, Ken, we mentioned the mentoring of several students every year with our program and Sam, your involvement as well. Couldn't thank you enough. Um, you both have such incredibly uh, meaningful roles uh, in your professional lives. I appreciated a comment about the personal, um, you know, uh, you know, accomplishments, Ken, in your reference to being a husband and a father. Um, Price, again, great to see you. So just many thanks. And uh, Paul Layden, you're here to kind of uh, launch us into the, the comfort break, I think is what we're calling it. So, uh, and I, we're gonna be doing that a little bit early. There's nothing like a comfort break uh, in the middle of a <laughs> conference. So, uh, all right, Paul, off yes. to you. Ready. David, thank you so much. And Ken and Sam, thank you so much. Price, great job, good to see you again. Uh, so yes, everybody, uh, my name is Paul Layden. I'm one of the conference coordinators here. Uh, we will be taking a comfort break and we will resume at 2.30 p.m. Mountain Time. 